At the moment, we can only generate one question in our game. So let's change that. Let's enable the game to generate multiple questions and also create the logic to handle the answers. Let's start by going to the onAnswerSubmitted method and converting the input into an integer. And I'm going to change the name of that entry to answer entry to make it more clear when we read it from the back end. And then I'll create a boolean that initially will be assigned to false. And the name of this boolean will be is correct. And this boolean will be reassigned in a switch statement. A switch statement which has the game type property as its criteria. So the first case in this switch statement will be the case addition string. If that's the case, the is correct variable will be assigned to the boolean expression that's checking if the answer equals the sum of the first number and the second number. And we're going to pass the is correct variable as an argument to the process answer method, which we're going to create. And we can't forget the break, which is mandatory in switch statement cases. And the next step will be to create the process answer method. But before that, let's create a new variable called score, which will be initially assigned to zero. And back in the process answer method, we're going to say if is correct is true. And we can use this implicit evaluation where we just use the name of the boolean. If that is the case, the score will be incremented by one. We're also going to use that boolean as a criteria to decide the text of the answer label. And again, we're using a ternary expression and based on a condition, which is on the left of the question mark. If this condition is true, what's on the right of the question mark will be assigned. And if it's not true, what's on the right of the colon will be assigned. But here, we don't need to call this method for each case. All we need to do is to reassign the boolean based on the correct equation. So we can call the method after the switch statement, which is way cleaner. Then let's add the code for each operation. And it's all very similar. We are only changing the operation symbol. And now that we have the ability to answer the questions, let's create the logic to generate multiple questions. So I'm creating an integer property that's going to be constant. So I'm using the const keyword and then I'll create a variable integer that holds the games left. And that's initially assigned to the total amount of questions. And after each question gets answered, I need to decrease the games left by one. And I'm using for that the minus minus signs. And I'm also making sure that I empty the answer entry. So I assign it to an empty string and using an if statement, I'm going to say that if the games left are higher than zero, I'm going to call the create new question method. And if games left equals zero, I'll call the game over method, which I have to create. So let's create that method. And initially in this method, all we are doing is changing the text in the game over label. And I'm using string interpolation so we can show the score and total questions properties. So let's run the app and see if it works. So let's play a round of the addition game. And I can see that the messages are displayed correctly. But at the moment, when the game is over, nothing else happens. And I want to make some elements invisible, the question elements and also give the users the ability to go back to the menu after the game is over. So let's see how we can do that back in the game page XAML file. We're going to create a second vertical stack layout inside the first one. And then we will grab the first label, the entry, the answer button and the second label and move it to the second vertical stack layout. And I'm going to name this tag the question area. That's going to give me the ability to manipulate all of these elements visually without having to replicate code. And I'm also going to create a second button, the back to menu button, which initially is set to invisible and has as a click event the on back to menu method. Back to the CS file, in the game over method, we're going to set the question area is visible property to false and the back to menu button to true once the game is over. And then we'll create the on back to menu method, which handles the click event. And in this method, we'll simply use the push async method, passing the main page as an argument. And just to tidy things up, we're going to set the font size of the answer label to 32 and the same for the game over label. And I'm also going to decrease the padding in the parent stack to 100. 
and we'll add a spacing of 25 to the child stack. Then we can test our program again and let's play an addition game and we can see that everything works as intended. In the next chapter, let's create a logic to store and visualize the game's history.